Hello, good evening, and welcome to our first ever virtual open event. I'm Oliver Barrett, headmaster here at TPS, and I'm delighted that so many of you can join us, albeit remotely, to find out more about our wonderful school. I sincerely hope that this will be the very first step for your family in joining this amazing community and a long and special association with our school. Now this evening, I'm joined by Mrs. Barnes, head of pre-prep, and Mrs. Marshall, our registrar, as members of the panel. During the course of this open evening, the panelists will give you an insight into school life and the admissions process. And we intend to show you a short film to give you a flavor of pre-prep. And most importantly, to see the children and some of the activities that we offer here. Now, uh, just to explain the format of this evening, there'll be an opportunity to submit questions within the event. Simply click on the bottom, uh, uh, the button at the bottom of the, the image uh, where it says Q&A to submit your questions and we'll endeavour to answer as many as possible following the presentations. I very much want this to be a helpful and informative event and remember that any question is welcome. This event will be recorded should you wish to revisit any of the content at a later date. So TPS was founded almost 50 years ago, uh, or a little bit over, 51 years, and we had our 50th anniversary last year. It was founded in 69 in Twickenham by the Green, uh, by the Reverend Donald Hill, uh, with the encouragement and support of a number of local families. Uh, in the early 90s, the school moved to our beautiful 19th century building, the Beverly, uh, where we are today, and that's hence why we call ourselves Twickenham Prep School in Hampton, or TPS Hampton. Uh, we have boys and girls in our thriving school, uh, with the school growing in numbers uh, to the healthy, uh, close to 300 that we have today. So our ethos is very much founded on those Christian principles, uh, and this continues to pervade the life of the school. And we have very strong connections in our local parish with St Mary's, uh, and also uh, this underpins the fact that we have strong connections with our community. Prayer is very much part of gatherings and assemblies, along with services, including uh, quite recently harvest, as you might imagine, and usually our carol concerts and of course Easter celebrations too. Uh, as you might imagine, we're uh, looking at this very creatively at the moment and finding other ways to connect with parents and our community uh, given the lockdown. Uh, now we welcome very much families of other faiths too and of course those of none. And we recognize very much that the values we espouse are those that resonate with many. We are a very di diverse community in terms of the backgrounds of our families and our staff. Uh, and it's a really special aspect and something that I'm really keen to ensure that we celebrate. The curriculum and the events we organise reflect and celebrate the rich learning opportunities within our community. The values, well, what do we want the children to be? Well, we hope that children leaving TPS are kind, thoughtful, selfless in their interactions. And our school, which is a very nurturing place, uh, considers all our thinking to be based on what is most child-centered. And I think that really sets TPS apart. We want the children to be happy and excited about school. And when I look outside the window of my office each morning, I want to see the children happy, smiling, looking forward to lessons and seeing their teachers and friends. We aspire to help the children become courageous, considerate, courteous and calm young people. These are the TPS learning habits. Uh, and hopefully setting them on a path in the future to perhaps be leaders of industry within their fields, experts, but also we want them to have a social conscience and a desire to give back to society. So we're a prep school. Uh, so what does that mean? So being a preparatory school at its essence uh, is our aim at the end to ensure that children are prepared for their future journey at senior school and beyond. Locally, uh, we have a great uh, variety of superb senior schools and the school has an excellent reputation to, for guiding parents through that process of finding the right senior school and preparing the children for the 11 plus or 13 plus examinations. Now, that may seem like a long time away uh, for those of you uh, of parents who perhaps your children are only uh, two or three years old, but believe you me, um, the 11 plus process and transition to senior school will be here very soon. Now with TPS not being tied to a single senior school, we've got the advantage of being able to find the right school for you and the dialogue between uh, myself as head and you as parents uh, starts really within the prep school. 
Our leavers, the girls, head to schools such as Surbiton High, Wimbledon High, Sir William Perkins School over in Chertsey, very locally LEH, uh, Tiffin Girls, Notre Dame. Uh, the boys head off to schools like my alma mater, Hampton, uh, Reeds, KCS Wimbledon, Halliford and St Paul's. And of course, we have a number of children who head to co-ed schools, uh, such as my former school, St George's, where I've come from only recently to take up the headship here, Kingston Grammar, Claremont, St John's in Leatherhead and Epsom College. Uh, and these are also popular destinations for our families. So looking at TPS and the structure of the school, uh, we're two form entry and I'd like you to consider us really being in three distinct elements. The first, which is pre-prep, is housed where I am today in this uh, purpose-built building with two forms or classes in each year group from reception up to year two. Each class has a form teacher and a teaching assistant, uh, but also we have teaching right from the start in reception delivered by a number of specialist teachers. And Mrs Barnes is going to explain that in greater detail a little later. The second stage is the move to the prep, which is housed in the beautiful Beverly building you may have seen from the high street. Within this years three to six, uh, children have progressively more subject specialist teaching uh, and a wider range of subjects. For example, the children in year three have art in our brand new building opened only in the last week, uh, which is called the hub. Uh, they have drama in year four. We have a programme called Bounce, which is designed and led by uh, an associated clinical psychologist who works with the school, and that's de designed to develop the children's mental resilience. We also teach Latin. We have reasoning sessions for our children to help them prepare uh, for the 11 plus exams. Uh, and we have an expansive games programme, uh, which features fixtures and tournaments and a wide variety of team sports. Now, the third part of the school uh, is really our senior prep, and that is just boys. So we have a class only of boys in year seven and one in year eight because the girls leave at 11. So the boys uh, in that third part of the school uh, have a very specialist um, education here because we're able to gear uh, the, the learning in their best interest to, to prepare them for senior school. And they have their own dedicated facility called the hub and a curriculum based on breadth and challenge. So that includes aspects of study skills, independent project work, and the use of mobile technology, uh, which is associated with the common entrance syllabus. Now, alongside that, of course, our oldest boys and indeed our oldest girls have a number of positions of responsibility that they very much enjoy. Now, often parents are very interested in class sizes. Uh, and of course, um, class sizes here are a lovely size, close to 20, that's our maximum. Uh, though in pre-prep, typically speaking, reception one and two, we tend to have groups of around about 16, 17 or 18 in a class with that teacher and teaching assistant. In the prep, the numbers are slightly higher, as I said, up to 20, uh, but in year four, we start to see setting uh, within the core subjects of, of maths and English, and that means group sizes reduce a little bit. And at the top end of the school, uh, in the senior prep, we sometimes have class sizes or group sizes, maybe only 10 or 12 because of our specialist teaching model. Now, in addition to the class structure and the year group structure, I really want to emphasise to you the importance of our house system. It's a really key element within the school. Uh, we have four houses named after discoveries and inventions around the time of the school's inception back in 1969. Uh, and these were chosen by the children. So they are Firebird, Apollo, Concord and Harrier. Uh, the houses are overseen by the heads of house and our house captains, the children, uh, as part of their positions of responsibility for our year six girls and our year eight boys. There are lots of events and competitions which bring the children together across the school. Uh, and across the year groups. And there's lots of lovely activities which see our older children and younger children engaging uh, and having uh, fun together, which is, which is fantastic for both. Now, as I mentioned, staffing uh, here allows our group sizes to, small, to be small, but also uh, the, one of the profound strengths here, uh, which I've really uh, begun to understand in my, my first uh, half term here, is the quality of the teaching in this school. It's excellent. Uh, there's very strong collaboration uh, across the school, within the year groups and indeed across departments. So in the prep, we have heads of each subject area who teach and lead their departments. 
but also they liaise very closely with the subject coordinators in our pre-prep, um, often come down to visit and observe lessons and support the teachers. Uh, and they are uh, very much at the forefront of development of the curriculum and ensuring that we have continuity and challenge. Now, within my SLT, the senior leadership team, I'm delighted uh, that I have uh, working alongside me our deputy head, Mr. Edwards, who has specific responsibility for boys' pastoral care. Mrs. Hepburn, the senior teacher, who has the equivalent responsibility for our girls. Mr. Hu is our director of studies, and he oversees the curriculum, assessment and reporting, and Mrs. Barnes, who oversees the pre-prep. Now, my colleagues pride themselves on establishing really close relationships with our parents because we realise the partnership is absolutely vital from the outset. We recognise that transition into the school for your children is really, really important, whether that's getting to know the teachers, the environment, the classrooms, uh, understanding the routines, but also getting to know other families and being part of the community. Um, and of course, we want to make sure you're kept abreast of your child's progress and development. Uh, and Mrs. Marshall, Registrar, will talk a little bit more about that induction process a little later. Now, I just want to finish by describing perhaps the broad opportunities at TPS, because for many schools considering, uh, for many families considering independent education, the question is often related to the difference in the offering. You know, what do we provide here above and beyond that that you would expect in the state maintained sector or indeed other local independent schools? So in addition to that specialist teaching in the pre-prep and the prep school, um, there are some other really important points to, to put across to you. So first of all, our clubs and activities. These are run by the teaching staff. Uh, some are before school, some at lunchtime, some after school, and also uh, delivered by some visiting teachers. So we offer some 11 different school clubs in the pre-prep, starting in year one, and this rises up to around about 25 different choices in the prep school. We also have the RAP Club, uh, which is our after school provision, which is available as, uh, through to 6.30 in the evening. And indeed, the earliest time uh, that children can come to school in the mornings is 7.30. So there is an extended school day for those that need it. Our clubs include sports, creative pursuits, coding, technology, game playing and academic activities uh, through things like uh, following authors and writing and indeed chess too. Uh, and I should mention chess in particular. Um, it's a huge strength of the school. Uh, many of our children enjoy chess. Uh, it's fantastic for academic development. And indeed, we have been national champions within independent schools uh, over the last couple of years. Also within the school, we offer an activity within the curriculum called Think Tank, which is a program led uh, and based on problem solving in the context of game play. It's really popular with the girls and the boys, and we compete against teams from other schools in the UK. And indeed, we even send uh, teams abroad to compete internationally, which is great fun. Music is a great strength here. We have a dedicated director of music, Mrs Hill. Uh, she teaches all of the children in the school from reception upwards and runs choirs in both the prep and the pre-prep along with the school orchestra. Uh, she also runs various ensembles and also coordinates the various peripatetic music teachers so that your children can learn an instrument uh, within lesson times. And that works really, really well. Sports, well, of course, there's an extensive sports program. Uh, we have dance, gymnastics, games, and swimming within uh, the pre-prep program. Uh, within year three upwards, uh, the children have a PE lesson and two games afternoons, which also features swimming again. Uh, the main sports here for the girls are netball, hockey, and now cricket in the summer term. And boys, the main sports are football, rugby, and cricket. Uh, we have really strong connections with local sports facilities. We use Kempton Cricket Club for a lot of our sports, uh, particularly the fields there. We have Sunbury Leisure Centre, which we use for swimming. Hampton Open Air Pool, just across the road for our galas. We also use um, Collects for squash. Our older boys play squash. Uh, we also offer sailing later on in school through the Lensbury Club. Uh, and also uh, we have a connection with Power Soccer for floodlit football. So there's lots of opportunities, both team sports and individual uh, sessions too. Now, I also want to mention re residential trips. Uh, this is a strong feature of our prep school provision with trips to France abroad for the language aspects and linking with our language offering. Uh, and we also offer residential trips to PGL centres, including one in Pembrokeshire in Wales, uh, which the children love to visit. And of course, the staff are the very first to put their hands up to uh, head on the trip as well. 
uh, and that's got an outdoor pursuit aspect uh, as part of our trips week. So um, just to finish before I move on to showing you what I hope will be a really enjoyable film, I just wanted to speak a little bit about my vision as headmaster and the, uh, the priorities that I have um, starting within my role. Well, at the moment, we're very much working on our new building, the hub, which I mentioned having opened only very recently. Uh, and alongside that is a huge um, push on our IT provision, in particular mobile solution for our pupils and also for the teachers here, allowing uh, new opportunities uh, for the way in which lessons are delivered. I'm very keen on my sports and I'm very keen to offer as many opportunities for children to be active uh, within school as possible. Uh, I strongly believe in children having lots of different experiences at a young age. Uh, to enthuse them about school and about being active and we're looking at sports tours in the near future for our older children to go abroad and play sports against clubs and other schools. Uh, alongside that is a, a broadening of our range of clubs and activities uh, and in particular our music provision offering. Uh, alongside that uh, we're also looking for our children to find ways that they can link with our community. Um, at the moment of course with the restrictions in place um, it's very difficult to do so, but in terms of charitable work and local associations, uh, teaching our children to be confident public speakers and to reach out uh, to other organisations and other children in other schools uh, and to make uh, connections there, I think is very important. And finally, from me, uh, I'm very keen to look closely at our academic provision. Uh, it's really important to me that children uh, find the area in which they can thrive and succeed. Uh, and, I, and that's very much through the process of ensuring suitable challenge uh, and enrichment for all through academic subjects and beyond. And that's something that I'm very much focusing on with my teaching staff. OK, so uh, I'm very much wary. Uh, you've been listening to me wax lyrical about the opportunities here for your family uh, and your son or your daughter at this wonderful school. So what I'd like to do now is share with you a short film to give you a much better sense of life in the pre-prep as explained by Mrs Barnes, head of our pre-prep. Hello, my name is Barbara Barnes and I'm head of pre-prep here at Twickenham Prep School in Hampton. I love pre-prep for many reasons, but mostly because of the wonderful families, the children who attend school who are so vibrant and lively and loving coming to school. We have a wonderful staff who are really energetic and really keen to work as a team and who give their best every day. We have a wonderful open shared area which we use for a variety of different purposes in the week. We begin the week perhaps with small group work or extension work for pupils who work um, with a teaching assistant or a teacher. We also use our shared area space for working in a whole year group or perhaps for fun and practical activities with the whole pre-prep department. In pre-prep we have two classes of every age group and our classes are quite small. The children come from a whole variety of different nurseries from the surrounding areas and in fact many don't know anybody at all when they start school. However, they settle very, very quickly and within the first two weeks of September all our children are coming in the door independently without any adult support. Our classes are mixed ability and we are obviously co-ed. There's two adults in each reception class. Within their classroom, they work with their teacher and a teaching assistant, which means that the children get a lot of one-to-one -one, um, quality teaching. Each day, children in reception take part in a specialised programme called Motor Movers. In this programme, the children are getting up and getting moving, practicing fine and gross motor skills and this is a great start to every day so the children are happy and ready to learn once lessons begin. Our mornings tend to be more structured. Each day the children have maths activities, writing and phonics and lots of opportunities to record and to draw and to have time to, to follow their own individualised learning programme. From the beginning in reception, children have a broad range of subject specialist teaching. We have specialist teachers coming in to teach French, music, PE, games, computing and library. 
the children thoroughly enjoy these lessons and the lessons are spaced out throughout the week so there's always something to look forward to. So the TPS lunches are legendary. They're really popular with both staff and children. We have a very broad range of food available on the menu, which is all home-cooked, healthy food cooked from scratch. The children sit at tables with children from all ages in pre-prep, so they get to meet new children and get to know new people. This is also part of our social development for our young children and really helps them to develop conversation skills and to make new friends. We try to get the children outside as much as possible. In the week, the children will have a PE and a games lesson, and games lessons are mostly conducted outside. Reception children have a dedicated play space outside their classrooms. So in the afternoons, when they have free flow, play-based activities, they use the outdoors. In addition to this, we also have a nature trail, which is run by a forest school practitioner. Once a week, the children get the opportunity to work in a very small group where they can really explore and learn, particularly using things like the mud kitchen and the bug hotel on the forest school area. In pre-prep, the children have specialist lessons with a think tank teacher once a week. And in these lessons, the children learn thinking skills and strategy skills through playing games. There's a broad range of clubs available after school for both Year 1 and Year 2 children, which include chess, singing, games and construction, arts and crafts, drawing and model making. We believe in being nurturing and inclusive here at TPS. Family is central to all of that. Many children attend school with cousins, siblings and family friends. We have very strong parental support throughout the school. That makes it a very special place to be both as a child and as a parent. It's been a real pleasure to show you a flavour of our pre-prep and many of the highlights of the children's day. We look forward to welcoming you here to our pre-prep in the future and I'm always here to answer any questions. Wasn't that great? I hope you enjoy getting a flavour of the wonderful provision in pre-prep and just how much fun the children have here each and every day. So now it's my great pleasure to hand over to the star of the film, Mrs Barnes, uh, to help you gain greater insight into the amazing foundation that we provide for both our girls and our boys. Thank you, Mr Barrett. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to our pre-prep family. I hope to give you a, a, a bigger flavor of everything that you would like to know about our pre-prep and to discuss some of the aspects from the film in greater length as I go through. Our pre-prep begins with reception class. The staff work closely with, together in each year group to plan activities to stimulate and extend the children's learning and their social experience in all areas of the curriculum. Pre-prep is a really thriving hub of joy. It's a place for exploration, play, fun, and learning throughout the week. And I have to say, it's an enormous pleasure coming to work here every day with the wonderful families that we work with. The learning that goes on in pre-prep is further enriched and extended through specialist teaching, which we've mentioned in computing, French, music, think tank, PE and games, and library. Here at TPS, we have a very strong tradition of teaching a curriculum that's broad and balanced. As the children move from EYFS in reception through to pre-prep and then prep, the development of social skills is a key foundation stone on this learning journey. We believe that children who are happy and sociable will settle well and go on to thrive in their learning. Our staff are deployed to spend optimum time with the children and they build strong relationships to create an environment where the children are keen to please and to achieve their potential. Our class sizes are small, so the adult child ratio is high. This means that the children can have a considerable amount of time with adults during the day. And this is an important factor 
in developing those close relationships, getting to know the children and extending the children's social skills and the learning in all areas of the curriculum. In reception, our mornings tend to be more formal and our afternoons tend to have be less structured in their teaching with a lot of free flow play, STEM, cross-curricular lessons, which are planned for reception. In year one and year two, the lessons are um, more structured in subjects like science, geography, history, and that's in year one and year two in the afternoons as the children go through. Homeschool reading books are changed every day, and there are many opportunities to read during the day, reading with friends, with a teaching assistant, with a class teacher, books in the classroom, books in the library, books in the garden and in the playground. In pre prep we say books are best. Classroom teaching is extended by small group work using our shared area, interactive whiteboards, our teaching assistant support and other support teachers who come along and assist with teaching in classes, in particularly numeracy and literacy. There are opportunities for writing every day in formal lessons and in play opportunities. We have a keen emphasis that writing activities are fun and engaging to capture the children's imagination and attention. Likewise with numeracy, we build math skills into all the play and all the informal activities that the children are doing, as well as the structured math lesson in the day. Our reception children also have daily phonics lessons using Ruth Miskin's Letters and Sounds and Jolly Phonics. We also link our handwriting closely to the teaching of phonics. And as you may have seen on the film, we teach our children a fully cursive writing style from reception. This goes on to benefit the children greatly as they become very fluid and fluent writers as they move towards year one. Our policies are whole school policies and our curriculum is planned accordingly. For example, the phonics programme that we teach in reception builds into that as they go further up through the school in year one, year two, all the way to even our spelling and um, spelling development in, uh, through prep into year eight. Staff in pre-prep and prep work closely together to ensure that there is continuity and progression from each year to the next. Each year, the teaching and learning builds on the firm foundations on the, of the previous year. And this is all part of a very carefully planned TPS learning journey to prepare the children for outcomes much later on on their learning journey, 11 plus exams and so on as they move towards secondary school. Although that is quite a long way off just now when you have quite a young child um, at home. Our staff work closely together to provide the best learning opportunities for the children. And there's a lot of collaborative conversation that goes along in planning lessons and working together for this. We assess where the children are on entry and plan learning tasks accordingly. So each child goes on their own learning journey. We're acutely aware that some of the children are just turning four when they come into school, but we also have near five-year-olds. So we're planning learning opportunities that suit both ages of children and all the children's different learning abilities at that time. One of our reception teaching assistants is a forest school practitioner and her knowledge and skill is used to enrich the curriculum and our after school care, our after school club provision. An essential aspect to this enrichment is getting outdoors whatever the weather and this applies to playtimes as well as curriculum time. The children in reception have weekly STEM lessons in very small groups to enable them to get the most of these problem solving and exploration activities with an adult on hand to guide them. Learning in the outdoors using nature and natural objects as a stimulus for young children is, is really important to what we're providing. The reception staff plan weekly learning opportunities for the afternoons for the children to get outside and to use their dedicated play space, which is at the back of the reception classrooms. It's separate to the playground. Likewise, in year one and year two, each class has its own garden area so the children can spill out there when they're doing practical tasks, playing and a variety of different things in the week. 
We have a great variety of after school clubs, which Mr. Barrett has already mentioned. Come Rain, Come Shine, Arts and Craft, Chess, Drawing, Bookworms, Model Making, Multi Sports. There are all kinds, there's something for everybody. We also further enrich the curriculum provision in the classroom by planning day trips for different age groups. And we go to places such as Gunnersbury Park Museum, Windsor Castle, Wisley Gardens, Noah Wood, Paynes Hill Park, to name some. Music lessons are also a great source of creativity so that children can extend their music ability and their music learning beyond the classroom lesson. So they have, can have one-to-one -one music tuition as the children move into year one, starting in the beginning with piano, violin or voice lessons. And as they get older and their hand strength develops and their hand size, they can move on to things like guitar, flute, clarinet, drums, trumpet, saxophone, and there are many others. Our main point of entry into school is in reception. Although we do have occasional places in year one and two, and sometimes we have new starters then if a space is available. We make personal contact with the nurseries or the child's previously school setting. We also liaise very closely with the parents and we make phone calls to the school and the nursery to ensure that we have as much information gathered as well as receiving the children's nursery transfer document prior to the children starting at school. We have a variety of welcome events for new parents in reception and children, so, so for the parents and for the children. So you get to make parent friends in advance of starting at school and you can get to know some other families and children and meet people who perhaps live close to you. So you can have little play dates in advance of that start at school. Parents assist greatly with the settling the children in September once they start school. And we have a phased way of parents being able to come in and settle the children. And I have to say, every year we manage to have the children coming in by themselves, independently, waving goodbye, happily at the door, within two weeks of being in reception class. And we're really proud of that because that, that is a testament to how we are welcoming the children and spending time with them and getting to know them. So another thing that helps this settling process is the fact that the children have a very structured daily timetable and they thrive on the routine and the variety and the pace of lessons available each day. The pupils enjoy a morning and an afternoon playtime in our very spacious playground at the back of the school. So they've got plenty of space to run about and play with equipment. They also have a climbing wall and an adventure playground. So there's definitely something for everybody. School lunchtime is great fun. We have a fabulous catering team who serve food with love. And our children and our staff love the great variety of home cooked meals available. And there's always some good choice on that menu every day. This was really apparent in the film where you could spot empty plates while other children were being served. And this is a daily occurrence. So that's a great thing for having a happy child at school. We pride ourselves on having close relationships with our parents and family is really central to all that we do. We have daily communication with parents in person or through a reading diary, by email, and now Zoom and our Shobi platform. Teachers are available at the door at the start and the end of the day. I generally do the welcome in the morning and take messages and pass those on. My staff all dismiss their own classes to their parents or whoever is collecting them. And if parents aren't arriving at school, they have the option to use, if they're not doing the drop off or the pick up, they have the option to use the homeschool reading diary as a point of reference for passing messages on. And obviously, if ever you need a conversation, we're here. We try to operate an open door policy and really get into the heart of little minor niggles before they become big worries. There's also a formal parents evening twice a year. There's one in the autumn and the spring. We also have an optional one in the summer term, which I have to say, not many people need to make use of because we have a summer term report then as well. We extend our school day for working parents at the start of the day and at the end. So children can be dropped off from 7.30 a.m. 
and then there's breakfast club at 8 a.m. We provide after school care um, where the children are picked up from the pre-prep and taken to the rap club, which is based in our school grounds and just across the playground. So we ensure that the children are always looked after and always passed on by an adult that they know into the care. And this wraparound care goes on until 6.30 in the evening. Transition to prep is, is a big event for the children, but actually it's such a smooth transition. In EYFS and Key Stage, sorry, EYFS and Key Stage 1 really are the foundation stones of the learning journey. And so by the time our children are moving to prep from year two, they're really grounded in all the skills they need to make them independent, responsible learners who are highly motivated. And as all our policies include the children of all ages, it is a very, very smooth transition. The staff come down to pre-prep, get to know the children very well, and we have lots of ways of linking with the class in prep prior to their movement. Pastoral care is a very strong tradition here and a real strength of the school. We all know the names of the children and we get to know those children well, so we know their strengths, their weaknesses, and most importantly, the things that motivate them to do their best every day. We use lots of positive reward strategies to incentivize the children and to get the best out of them. And I hope I've been able to give you a good flavor of our pre-prep in this conversation. And I really do hope that you can see that really family is at the heart of all that we do. Now I'm finished my chat. I'm gonna hand you back to my colleague, or over to my colleague, Joanna Marshall, who is our admissions registrar and she can give you a greater insight into how the admissions process works here at TPS. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank Mr. Barrett and Mrs. Barnes for their wise words. I hope you've enjoyed the presentations this evening and that we have already answered many of your questions about TPS to help you with your very important decision about your child's future schooling. Of course, we really look forward to once again welcoming prospective families here to TPS in person for real life open events in the coming academic year and indeed to more relaxed times ahead when we could revert to offering visits during the school day. We know that it's important for many prospective parents to see the school in action. Whilst nothing can truly replace those types of visits, we hope that this evening has been a helpful insight. So what to do next? If you're interested in a reception place, that is our main point of entry. People start in reception in the September following their fourth birthday. It's worth noting that we are non-selective at this entry point only. Registration is very straightforward at this stage, simply by completing an admission application form and returning that with the registration fee. A registration is accepted in date order, so the earlier you register for reception, the better. Formal offer letters are sent out to those on the entry list in the spring term of the year prior to joining. So that's 18 months ahead. To help new reception families become familiar with the school in a normal year, um, we hold a number of events for the children and their parents in the year leading up to them actually joining us, including a welcome morning in November, a Christmas party, an event in the spring, and an orientation morning, along with a new parents evening event in the June. We use a combination of the school and also the little gym in Hampton Hill for these events, which are lots of fun and a really great opportunity for you and your child to get to know their classmates and their parents. Of course, we're currently looking at how we can invite our 2021 reception families to the school and to other events as part of our welcome program in line with the ever-changing government guidance. These are events that we've prided ourselves on in the past as they help all our families to connect and find common ground ahead of the children joining us. So we will be in touch with our 2021 family soon with an update about our plans for the spring term. If you're interested in entry at other ages, I must tell you that we are full in the prep school. That's year three upwards with considerable wait lists for those years. Occasional places may become available in the pre-prep year groups other than reception and should a place arrive in any year group, children seeking these places are always assessed before entry. For entry specifically into year three, 
we hold a seven plus assessment morning in the autumn term before the year of entry with assessments in English, maths and reasoning. Children are offered places if their ability and potential is of a similar standard to the group they would be joining. These places are limited as we do not expand into year three. So we would expect just a couple of places to be available at the seven plus entry point. This year's assessment for entry into year three 2021 took place just a couple of weeks ago on the 7th of November. I think um, that's about it from me on the admissions front for now, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. If you'd like to arrange to speak personally with Mr. Barrett by phone or Zoom this term, please contact me by phone or by email and I'll be happy to help. If you have any further questions regarding admissions specifically for me, please do drop me a line. Um, we uh, are going to move on to uh, the Q&A session now. Um, and we're really happy to have a few questions here from some of you. Um, if you think of anything you'd like to ask at this stage, um, just simply type that question into the Q&A box on your screen and we'll do our best to help. And we'll answer as many of these questions as possible tonight, but um, we will follow up with answers to any that we've missed directly with you this week. So um, our first question is, uh, I think I'll, I'll take this one to Mr. Barrett. Um, so a um, little question about our Christian ethos um, and how we provide for children that don't take part in the Christian elements of the school and um, wouldn't normally want to join in with the prayers or hymns. Um, so um, Mr. Barrett, if I can hand that one over to you. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much, Mrs. Marshall. So uh, in answer to that question, um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, we have a number of children who are uh, not practicing Christians and we have a number of families um, who um, practice another faith and indeed a number of others uh, who don't practice a faith at all and all are welcome. Uh, within our RE syllabus, uh, obviously we study Christianity, but uh, we're obliged to uh, study a number of other different religions uh, because um, from an educative point of view, I think it's really important that the children have a really broad understanding of the world and to understand different people and beliefs and to see the differences and similarities across the different religions. Um, and it's very much about meeting each family on their own faith journey. Uh, so uh, in terms of children taking part within assemblies and services, uh, saying prayers and singing, uh, we would want the children to participate and to feel active in those, but to do so uh, comfortably. No one would force a child to, uh, to, to, to read a prayer. And indeed, while we're reading a prayer out, the children can sit quietly or reflect. Uh, and indeed, uh, there would be no reason why we wouldn't welcome uh, prayers from, from other religions um, as part of the education for our children. So I, I really hope we're very welcoming. Um, it's something I'm very happy to talk about with any parents in the future to make sure that you feel happy about uh, the approach that we take. Uh, and we hope the Christian values that we uh, believe are important in our interactions as a community are those which any family uh, would be very comfortable with. Mrs. Marshall, can I hand back to you? Thank you very much. Um, that's great. Now, I've got a question um, for Mrs. Barnes, I think I'm going to um, give this one to you. So uh, the question here is about special dietary needs. Mrs. Barnes, can you just explain a bit about um, how we cater for halal or vegetarian or even um, perhaps expand into how we deal with an intolerance like a, like a dairy allergy or something like that? Um, I'll just hand over to Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. Marshall. I'm really happy to answer that question. Um, in answer to dietary requirements, we have a whole host of children and adults at school, actually, with a variety of dietary requirements. On entry, or prior to entry, we collate data on dietary requirements for all our pupils. And if there is anything complex or just slightly different to the, the um, maybe a vegetarian or like a, a no gluten, no dairy, the um, information is discussed with myself and our catering team, and then we liaise with the parents as appropriate. Um, we have several children in pre prep currently who don't eat beef, don't eat pork. Um, unfortunately, our, our meat is not halal meat. 
um, but all everything is sourced from reputable providers. Our meat is sourced from a local butcher and um, can be tracked back to source. It's all a red tractor, but I, I understand that that doesn't um, satisfy the kind of halal requirements, obviously. Um, we have a good variety of vegetarian option every day on the menu. Um, and we have several children who would opt in or out of various things. So at the moment we have pescatarian children um, and we have children who opt into vegetarian even though they eat meat at home. And all of this is kind of organized in consultation with the parents and the family. If a child has particular requirements to do with dairy or intolerances, our catering manager, Ms. Cassiano, liaises with the parents and will meet with the parent to discuss it. And, and she will prepare foods. Sometimes she will even parents will help and, and say that they've made something and would we like to put it in our freezer? She will prepare. I, I've seen her on many an occasion preparing pizzas and special bread. I've seen her, you know, come up with all sorts of options to children. So really, you know, we try not to have dietary requirements as a barrier to the children having school lunches. Practically all of the children eat the school lunches and they really do eat with gusto. So we always find a way around to try and suit each child's needs. But as I say, unfortunately, we don't do halal meat. That's the one thing we can't provide. But um, we're always happy to chat to parents and to find a way to, so that your child can enjoy a warm, healthy home cooked lunch in the middle of the day. I do hope that answers your question. And obviously, if you have anything further on that, I'll be happy to answer that um, later this evening or at a later date. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Barnes. Right, um, another question here, I think, uh, again, for Mr. Barrett. Um, just a question, is there a winter skiing trip at TPS? I'll hand that one over to you. That sounds fun. I think, sign me up, certainly, if there's a winter skiing trip. Yes, uh, in, in all seriousness, there is a trip that we run, I think, every two years. Uh, it's aimed at our uh, prep children, so that's year three upwards. Uh, to a resort in Europe and parents and families are welcome to attend as well so uh, it's very much a trip for families to go on uh, and the children then meet up for skiing lessons and obviously there's a, there's a social aspect too so yes it is something that we run and as I mentioned before um, sporting program here and extended provision with trips abroad or in the UK for tours and some, that's something I'm very keen to ensure happens in the future and develops. Mrs Marshall back to you. Lovely, thank you. Um, I've got a couple of questions here, Mr. Barrett, which are in a similar vein. So I'm gonna sort of try and mix them together. So firstly, sort of, can you explain a little bit about why year seven and year eight is a boys only uh, senior prep? And also um, if some of our boys do in fact leave at year six, at the end of year six, at 11 years old, to go on to secondary school. For example, uh, if a pupil um, excels in another subject such as art or music and is not um, keen to follow the common entrance. Um, so if you could just give us a bit of detail about that, thank you. My pleasure, yes, of course. So uh, in answer to that, those questions, which are very much uh, linked together, uh, the question as to why we have this model uh, which might seem a little bit strange at first glance as to, to girls heading off at the end of year six, age 11, and our boys staying. Well, first of all, um, part of that is historical. So uh, a number of the local schools uh, that are selective independent schools uh, take girls at 11. That is the normal uh, point at which uh, senior schools accept, and that's uh, uh, based through the entrance examinations the children take in the January of their year six. So the girls move on at that stage. Now, historically, going back a long, long time, preparatory schools like TPS have held on to boys for a little bit longer. Uh, and of course, the question is why, and, and perhaps why it's still the case now. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, there is this uh, feeling that boys, to some degree, and of course, I'm, I'm talking very generally here, tend to develop a little bit later in terms of some of the core skills. So that's perhaps in some circumstances, concentration, uh, their phonics and reading ability, uh, their level of independence. So, you know, there are a number of boys who very much develop their gross motor skills and, and, and much stronger in terms of the activity and outdoor play. Uh, but these other things come a little bit later on. And therefore, staying in a smaller setting 
uh, like TPS with small class sizes, that specialist teaching, which is very much a feature of our school, uh, opportunities for responsibility in a setting that they know very well. It gives them that confidence and that opportunity at the top end of the school to take their learning to a very, very high level. Now, a million years ago, when I went to Hampton, uh, I joined in the first year and I can remember the prep school boys joining in the third year. Uh, and even to this day, I can remember that they are they were way ahead uh, in the areas of things like Latin, languages, mathematics. They came in and, and, and the, the senior schools could see and continue to see the fact that these these boys are working at a very high level. And, and of course, when they join senior schools, they're immediately going in, in the third year. They're going to be choosing their GCSE options, believe it or not. Uh, and indeed, a number of the courses for GCSE will start in the third year. Uh, so senior schools continue to view 13 plus entry very, very positively uh, because of those academics and because also that allows the boys the, the, the time to develop and to be ready uh, for senior school. Uh, and of course here, uh, we put a lot of our resources and uh, our specialist teaching at the top end is focused on those top year groups. And in the reality in senior schools, uh, it's quite often uh, their heads of subjects, heads of department will be focused at the top end on their A-level students and GCSE students. Uh, and of course, the first and second years perhaps are a little bit more focused on settling into the senior school environment uh, rather than that kind of academic push uh, that we feel we can make because the boys are comfortable in doing so. So that, that perhaps answers the first question of the two. Uh, the other question really related to whether we see any boys leaving S11 anyway, and the answer is yes, we do. It's a very small number, though, a very small fraction. And indeed, our year seven and year eight is pretty much full, as Mrs. Uh, Marshall mentioned. You know, we're ideally looking to have a class size of 18, uh, maximum 20 in year seven and eight, and we're, we're there at the moment. And that's because the boys took their exams in year six, were successful in gaining entry, but uh, with the understanding that they would move at 13. So they take the same exams as boys moving at 11 uh, and they have that kind of confirmed place. Um, theoretically, it's based on their common entrance results, but in reality nowadays, um, it is effectively uh, an unconditional offer because the senior schools uh, recognize and want those boys. They know that they're going to be working to a very high level. And indeed here, we, because of the demand, uh, the governors and the leadership of the school, my predecessor, Mr. Malam, have invested a lot of money uh, most recently in the hub, which is the provision aimed at our older boys. And indeed an investment of somewhere in the region of one and a half million pounds is reflective of parents continuing demand and desire to have their boys educated up to 13 here. Uh, and it's a great feature of the school. Uh, and it's one of the reasons that I joined. In terms of art and music and the more creative subjects, well, again, uh, that, that new building has an art studio with, within it. Uh, children from year three up to year eight have their art lessons there. And indeed at the top end of the school in year seven and eight, we prepare the boys, um, the girls a little bit earlier, but the boys for scholarship entry at 13. And uh, for example, my old school, St. George's College, uh, have a number of scholarships they offer in the third year. And I know that uh, TPS boys have been very successful in, in securing art, music and drama scholarships moving into that third year. Uh, so it allows us to work with those children. So I don't perceive there being any uh, overarching focus on the more academic areas as opposed to those wonderful creative subjects. Okay, I hope that answers the question or both of them. Uh, so I'm gonna head, hand back now to, to Mrs. Marshall. Thank you very much, Mr. Barrett. We've just got time for one more question, um, just about homework in the prep and if the children in prep get homework and how often, um, and that will be our last question of the evening. But if you do think of anything else um, overnight or at any point, please do email me. I'll be really happy um, to respond to any questions. And if there are any questions that we haven't managed to cover this evening, um, I will get back to you um, tomorrow by email. So I'm just gonna hand over to Mr. Barrett for this final question about homework. Thank you very much. So yes, in terms of homework, um, yeah, that, that, uh, in, in terms of year three in the prep school, uh, we introduce English and maths once a week uh, with an activity of some in the region of about 25 uh, to 30 minutes uh, for each of those. There's also spellings, which are learnt over a number of nights uh, with some tests uh, on those spellings a little bit later in the week or the following week. There's also uh, online maths activities through the Doodle Maths platform, which is very popular with the children uh, and has a very good uh, basis behind it in terms of math mathematical skills and development. And so that's in year three. So some in the order of about half an hour uh, for each of those. 
Uh, in year four and five, we, we're developing the independence and the homework skills. So that moves up to uh, around about 35 minutes. Uh, and there's two English homeworks, two maths homeworks and a science homework each week, along with French vocabulary and a little bit of Latin, uh, which comes in in year five. Uh, and that's per week. Um, so, but again, only about uh, 35 minutes uh, per evening on those. Uh, as you might imagine, as the children move into the end of year five and into year six, the focus is largely on English and maths and reasoning. Uh, so verbal reasoning, non-verbal reasoning, because those are elements within the examinations the boys and girls take in year six for that 11 plus or 13 plus entry. Uh, and so that's very much the case in the first term of year six. And then in the second term of year six, we tend to diversify a little bit more. Uh, so subjects such as uh, history, geography, uh, RS, religious studies, uh, and other subjects to come in in the new year in year six, uh, because we want that breadth very much rather than focusing just on the core subjects. Uh, and then right at the top of the school, the boys uh, obviously studying for a very broad common entrance curriculum. Uh, they have about 40 minutes per subject. Uh, and we look very closely at ensuring that all the subjects as part of the common entrance are provided for. Uh, I should say alongside that, there's a lot of discussion with parents over expectations. Uh, we understand children are very busy outside of school with clubs and activities. Many are very show a great deal of talent in other areas. So things like gymnastics, for example, uh, and dance can be very time consuming swimming as well. Um, so there will be dialogue over those expectations and some understanding in places where uh, children need a little bit more time, perhaps on occasion to complete their work. And of course, we're very mindful of children's well-being uh, and their just of their self-esteem as well. Uh, and, and of course, there's dialogue and consideration of that through uh, each child's group tutor, their form tutor uh, along the way. Uh, so I hope uh, that gives a really clear indication of um, our homework provision uh, through the prep school. Now, um, I'm mindful uh, that uh, we have covered all of the questions asked, I think. Uh, if there are any questions that you've put forward that we haven't answered, uh, then Mrs. Marshall will be in contact. Uh, in due course to uh, provide you with an answer. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who've participated this evening for firing in those questions, keeping us on our toes, uh, and it shows that you're really interested in our wonderful school. So just to finish, uh, I just wanted to state uh, my thanks to you uh, for joining us this evening uh, and hope you found the session to be really informative and helpful. Uh, I'm really mindful that the choice you make for your child in terms of the school that they go to is one of the most important choices you make within your, your life. And indeed, it may be uh, the most important choice. Uh, and as loving parents, um, you want to make sure that it's not only the financial commitment that you make, but also in terms of the alignment of your view on life uh, with the school values. And I think that's really, really important. And we're wary that you need to be as informed as possible in that process. Uh, we want you to feel that you can make friends here, uh, as well as your children. Uh, with other families and feel fully part of a caring school community, which is very much TPS uh, and one that I've uh, already very much grown to, um, to be fond of in my, in my time here because of the welcome I've received from my colleagues and the children. So we very much hope to welcome you in due course uh, in the school itself, hopefully after Christmas, uh, to meet the teachers and the children. Uh, but until then, may I wish you all the very best of health and happiness for Christmas and the new year.